A three-year-old child in respiratory failure presents with severe retractions and oxygen saturation of 82% despite high-flow oxygen. What is the next best step? A. Begin chest compressions immediately. B. Provide bag mask ventilation with 100% oxygen. C. Prepare for 4 epinephrine administration. D. Initiate rapid sequence intubation without bagging. Answer, B. In pediatric respiratory failure with hypoxemia despite oxygen, the next step is to support ventilation using bag mask ventilation with 100% oxygen. Compressions are indicated only when there is no pulse or inadequate perfusion. Intubation may follow, but immediate bagging is life-saving. During resuscitation, a child's rhythm shows pulseless ventricular tachycardia. What is the first shock dose recommended in PALS? A. 1J slash KG B. 2J slash KG C. 4J slash KG D. 6J slash KG Answer, B. The first defibrillation dose for pediatric pulseless VT or VF is 2J slash KG. If unsuccessful, the second dose is 4J slash KG, followed by higher doses as needed, not exceeding 10J slash KG. A six-year-old with septic shock remains hypotensive despite fluid boluses. Which drug is first line for persistent shock in PALS? A. Dopamine B. Epinephrine C. Atropine D. Lidocaine Answer, B. In fluid refractory septic shock, epinephrine is the first-line vasoactive agent. Dopamine is no longer preferred due to variability in effectiveness. In a bradycardic child with poor perfusion and a heart rate of 40 per minute, what is the priority intervention? A. Administer atropine immediately. B. Provide chest compressions and oxygen. C. Deliver synchronized cardioversion. D. Start amiodarone infusion. Answer, B. Bradycardia with poor perfusion is treated with high-quality CPR and oxygen. Epinephrine or atropine can be given if bradycardia persists. Cardioversion and antiarrhythmics are used for tachyarrhythmias. A two-year-old child is in compensated shock. Which clinical finding most strongly indicates this? A. Normal blood pressure with tachycardia. B. Low blood pressure with slow capillary refill. C. Weak central pulses and bradypnea. D. Severe hypoxemia with apnea. Answer, A. Compensated shock in children presents as tachycardia with normal blood pressure. Hypotension occurs only in decompensated shock, which is a late and dangerous sign. A child in supraventricular tachycardia, SVT, is stable but unresponsive to vagal maneuvers. What is the next recommended intervention? A. Administer adenosine for rapid push. B. Begin synchronized cardioversion. C. Administer amiodarone infusion. D. Provide magnesium sulfate for. Answer, A. Stable SVT unresponsive to vagal maneuvers is treated with rapid 4 adenosine. Cardioversion is used for unstable patients. Amiodarone and magnesium are reserved for refractory cases. A 5-year-old post-cardiac arrest shows ROSC but remains unconscious. What is the priority in post-resuscitation care? A. Immediate extubation. B. Targeted temperature management. C. High-dose corticosteroids. D. Avoid oxygen supplementation. Answer, B. Post-cardiac arrest care includes maintaining normal oxygenation and ventilation and considering targeted temperature management, TTM, to improve neurologic outcomes. Which finding best differentiates distributive shock from hypovolemic shock in children? A. Narrow pulse pressure. B. Warm extremities with bounding pulses. C. Cold extremities with delayed capillary refill. D. Hypotension with weak carotid pulses. Answer, B. Distributive shock, e.g., septic shock, often presents with warm extremities and bounding pulses due to vasodilation, unlike hypovolemic shock which shows cold extremities and weak pulses. During CPR, an advanced airway is placed in a six-year-old child. What is the correct ventilation rate? 
a. One breath every 6 seconds without pausing compressions. b. One breath every 10 seconds with pauses and compressions. c. Two breaths after every 30 compressions. d. Two breaths after every 15 compressions. Answer, a. With an advanced airway, ventilations are given at one breath every 6 seconds, about 10 per minute, without interrupting chest compressions. A 7-year-old child presents in hypovolemic shock from severe dehydration. The first-line fluid choice is a. 20 ml per kg isotonic crystalloid bolus b. 10 ml per kg colloid bolus c. 5% dextrose bolus d. 20 ml per kg hypotonic saline bolus Answer, a. Hypovolemic shock is managed with isotonic crystalloids such as normal saline or ringer's lactate in 20 ml per kg boluses. Colloids and hypotonic solutions are not appropriate. A 4-year-old in shock has a capillary refill greater than 4 seconds and weak central pulses. What is the first priority? a. Start up an epinephrine infusion. b. Give rapid 4-isotonic fluid bolus. C. Place on high-flow nasal cannula oxygen. D. Begin chest compressions. Answer, B. Delayed capillary refill and weak pulses indicate poor perfusion. The immediate intervention is rapid 4-isotonic fluid bolus, 20 ml per kilogram, before considering vasopressors or compressions. During resuscitation, which rhythm is most commonly seen in pediatric cardiac arrest? a. Ventricular fibrillation b. Pulseless electrical activity c. Torsades to points d. Sinus bradycardia Answer, b. In children, pulseless electrical activity and asystole are more common than VF-VT, often due to hypoxia or shock rather than primary arrhythmias. A child with septic shock is refractory to fluids. The next best treatment is a. Epinephrine infusion. B. Atropine 4 push. C. Amiodarone bolus. D. Adenosine rapid 4 push. Answer, A. Fluid refractory septic shock requires vasopressor support. Epinephrine is first line to restore perfusion by increasing cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance. The recommended compression to ventilation ratio for two rescuers and infants is a. 15 colon 2. B. 30 colon 2. C. 5 colon 1. D. 10 colon 1. Answer, A. For infants and children, to rescuer CPR uses a 15 to 2 ratio to balance oxygen delivery with chest compressions. Which sign best indicates adequate ventilation during resuscitation? A. Chest rise with each breath. B. N. Tidal CO2 greater than 15 mm of mercury. C. Pink skin color. D. Audible breath sounds. Answer, A. Visible chest rise is the most reliable indicator that ventilation is effective, regardless of equipment. A 5-year-old in shock remains hypotensive despite fluids and epinephrine. What is the next step? A. Add norepinephrine infusion. B. Give sodium bicarbonate 4. C. Increase fluid boluses rapidly. D. Switch to adenosine. Answer, A. When shock persists despite fluids and epinephrine, norepinephrine is added for better vascular tone, especially in distributive shock. For a child with bradycardia and poor perfusion unresponsive to oxygen, what drug is first line? A. Amiodarone. B. Epinephrine. C. Lidocaine. D. Magnesium sulfate. Answer, B. Epinephrine is first line for symptomatic bradycardia. Atropine is reserved for bradycardia due to AV block or vagal causes. A child in VF arrest after defibrillation requires what immediate next step? A. Administer amiodarone. B. Resume CPR immediately. C. Give magnesium sulfate. D. Check for pulse. Answer, B. CPR is resumed immediately after defibrillation without delay to maximize coronary perfusion and chance of ROSC. 
What is the best indicator of high-quality CPR? A. Compression depth at least 1 inch. B. Visible chest recoil. C. ATCO2 greater than or equal to 20 mm of mercury. D. Heart rate greater than 100 per minute. Answer, C. ATCO2 greater than or equal to 20 mm of mercury during CPR is the best predictor of effective compressions and potential ROSC. Which medication is contraindicated in pulseless bradycardia? A. Epinephrine. B. Amiodarone. C. Atropine. D. Adenosine. Answer, D. Adenosine is used only in stable supraventricular tachycardia, not in pulseless or unstable bradycardia. In pediatric septic shock, what fluid type is preferred initially? A. Dextrose 5%. B. Normal saline or lactated ringers. C. Albumin 25%. D. Hypertonic saline. Answer, B. Isotonic crystalloids, and SRLR, are first choice for restoring perfusion in septic shock. During PALS resuscitation, which airway device ensures highest reliability for oxygenation? A. Orpharyngeal airway. B. Laryngeal mask airway. C. Endotracheal tube. D. Bag mask only. Answer, C. Endotracheal intubation secures the airway definitively, reducing aspiration risk and improving oxygen delivery. A 10-year-old is in supraventricular tachycardia with HR 210 per minute and stable BP. First management step? A. For amiodaron. B. Synchronized cardioversion. C. Vagal maneuvers. D. For epinephrine. Answer, C. In stable SVT, vagal maneuvers, ice to face, Valsalva, are first line before medications or shock. Which of the following is a common reversible cause of pediatric arrest? A. Hyperglycemia. B. Hypovolemia. C. Hypertension. D. Hyperventilation. Answer, B. Hypovolemia is part of the H's and T's list of reversible causes and is common in pediatric emergencies. A child in respiratory failure has a heart rate of 50 per minute. What is the immediate action? A. Give atropine. B. Provide bag mask ventilation. C. Start chest compressions. D. Give amiodarone. Answer, B. In children, bradycardia is often due to hypoxia. Effective ventilation is the first step. A six-year-old with asthma arrest is being ventilated. Which complication should be avoided? A. Hyperoxia. B. Hypoventilation. C. Hyperinflation. D. Bradycardia. Answer, C. In asthma, excessive ventilation causes air trapping and barotrauma, worsening cardiac output. A post-arrest child has persistent hypotension. The best next step is A. Start vasoactive infusion. B. Give hypertonic saline. C. Administer adenosine. D. Continue only fluids. Answer, A. Persistent hypotension post-ROSC requires vasoactive agents like epinephrine or norepinephrine, not just fluids. What is the preferred first shock dose for VF in children? A. 1J slash KG. B. 2J slash KG. C. 4J slash KG. D. 6J slash KG. Answer, B. The initial shock dose for VF slash VT in children is 2J slash KG, escalating with subsequent attempts. Which finding best indicates distributive shock? A. Narrow pulse pressure. B. Warm extremities with bounding pulses. C. Jugular venous distension. D. Bradycardia. Answer, B. In distributive shock, like sepsis, children may have warm extremities and bounding pulses due to low vascular tone. Which drug is avoided in pulseless VT arrest? A. Amiodarone. B. Epinephrine. C. Adenosine. D. Lidocaine. Answer, C. Adenosine is only for SVT, 
not for pulseless VT, which requires defibrillation and a meodoron slash lidocaine. A child has post-intubation bradycardia. First step is A. Epinephrine B. Disconnect from ventilator and give oxygen C. Atropine D. Chest compressions Answer, B. Post-intubation bradycardia often results from hypoxia or high intrathoracic pressure. Oxygenation is first priority. Which ETCO2 value suggests effective CPR in a child? A. Less than 5 mm of mercury. B. 10 mm of mercury. C. Greater than or equal to 15 mm of mercury. D. Greater than or equal to 30 mm of mercury. Answer, C. Effective CPR usually produces ETCO2 greater than or equal to 15 mm of mercury, with higher values predicting better ROSC chances. What is the epinephrine 4 dose for pediatric arrest? A. 0.01 mg per kilogram. B. 0.1 mg per kilogram. C. 1 mg per kilogram. D. 0.001 mg per kilogram. Answer, A. The correct 4-slash-IO epinephrine dose is 0.01 mg per kilogram every 3 to 5 minutes. The most common cause of pediatric cardiac arrest is A. Ventricular fibrillation B. Airway obstruction and respiratory failure C. Electrolyte imbalance D. Trauma Answer, B. Unlike adults, most pediatric arrests are due to respiratory failure or shock, not primary arrhythmias. Which action prevents hyperventilation during resuscitation? A. Deliver breaths over one second. B. Give 20 breaths per minute. C. Provide chest compressions continuously. D. Use a small tidal volume. Answer, A. Each breath should be delivered slowly over one second with visible chest rise, avoiding hyperventilation. Which drug treats torsades to points in children? A. Amiodarone. B. Magnesium sulfate. C. Adenosine. D. Atropine. Answer, B. Magnesium sulfate is the drug of choice for torsades to points due to cutie prolongation. For an infant with HR less than 60 per minute despite oxygen and ventilation, the next step is A. Atropine 4 B. Start chest compressions C. Amiodarone bolus D. Synchronized cardioversion Answer, B. If HR less than 60 per minute with poor perfusion, chest compressions are initiated in infants and children. A 9-year-old with distributive shock needs fluid resuscitation. The max total initial fluid is A. 20 ml per kilogram B. 40 ml per kilogram C. 60 ml per kilogram D. 80 ml per kilogram Answer, C. Up to 60 ml per kilogram of crystalloids may be given initially in distributive shock before considering vasopressors. Which is the preferred energy dose for synchronized cardioversion of SVT in children? A. 0.5 J slash kg B. 1 J slash kg C. 2 J slash kg D. 4 J slash kg Answer, B. The first synchronized cardioversion shock dose for unstable SVT in children is 0.5 to 1 J slash kg. The most important predictor of survival in pediatric arrest is a. Early intubation b. Early defibrillation c. High-quality CPR d. Rapid 4 access Answer, c. High-quality CPR with adequate rate, depth, and recoil is the strongest factor influencing survival outcomes in pediatric arrest.